live stage right here in Milwaukee. Just got out there and kicked some. You probably saw a little footage. Dean's kid guy. That would be Tyler. Blowing it up. Had a good time tonight, man. As you can see, I'm very happy where I'm at, man. As a kid, it was always my dream to be with Dean Guitars, you know, and play a Dean Guitar, to own one someday. And uh, funny enough, the way the whole thing unfolded, after uh, countless days of skipping school and just gawking at the Dean catalog, learning it inside and out, everything about it, and dreaming of it happening someday, uh, there was a guitar contest that came to town. And uh, the big prize was a Dean ML guitar. And at the same time, I didn't know my dad ordered me a Cherry Burst Dean ML standard, American, of course, all the way. And uh, the day that thing came in was the night of the contest, and I won the contest nonetheless. And I won. That was the best day of my life, man. I won the guitar, and my dad got me the badass uh, Dean Standard Cherry Burst. Of course, the door keeps opening when we're trying to talk here on cam, so do what you got to do. We'll see what kind of skills Tyler's got later. Get the, hit the outside noise button and C-section that off. Get your pull. All right, so anyway, that was a big moment in my life, man, back in the day. And uh, I was real proud to have two Dean guitars, not just one. Uh, How old were you? 16 years old, man. When I popped my first Dean nut. 16. <laughs> Best nut I ever shot. It hit the moon. I swear to God. Get you pull off that one. And uh, anyway, from there, you know, I'm 16. I'm a kid just like you are. I wanted to race some in hell. I wanted to buy this Firebird, man, formula. And I needed 600 bucks to buy the car. And like a jack off 16 year old, I lost my Oakleys. No, I'm just kidding. Hang on. No, no. <laughs> What I did, man, is I sold my, my the guitar I won. Ugly mother but I loved it, man. You know, uh, Burgundy, it wasn't the sexiest looking guitar, but it sounded better than the other one, which they both sounded great. Long story shy, I sold the guitar, the one I won, and I got 600 bucks. I got a car, but I sure missed that guitar. And man, through the whole way, through that whole cycle of all the time that I sat around thinking, man, Man, I should have did something else to get this car. I should have lost that great guitar. Rhyming with Diamond, coming again. You know, a long time coming. The guitar kind of made a little weird cycle, and it ended up in the hands of Buddy Blaze, and I didn't know that he got it. And he knew what I did to the Deans back in the day. I'd get them in the pawn shops for cheap. I'd route them out, Floyd Rose, hot rod pickups, do all the dimeizing to it, customize the paint jobs. And, and uh, anyway, he got the one, the actual one that I won, did all that, and uh, painted it up, lightning bolts, threw the pickups in there, hot rotted up, did the whole rig, threw the Floyd Rose on it, and uh, he was getting famous at that time, he was working for Kramer, and uh, I asked him if he would do a dime guitar for me, and uh, then the door opened, and it kind of chopped into my story, but that's all right, part two. Check out the chick holding the light. Get your pull off her. <laughs> Queen Dean right there, coming up. Anyway, uh, so Buddy goes, hey, uh, man, I'll, I'll do a dime guitar for you, man. And Buddy's, you know, family with me, man. Next thing I knew, next thing I knew, the next day on my doorstep, FedEx, was a big box. I opened it up, and I seen the case, and I kind of, you know, I totally knew it was a Dean in there. And I popped it open. I was like, how could he do something this quick? I popped it open. And it was the lightning bolt. Dime bolt, Dean in hell, man. And I was like, holy, greatest guitar I ever had, will ever have my whole life. Thank God I still got it now. I lost it one time and I had to pay 2,500 bucks to get it back. Look at this, spotlight coming in. Anyway, the story goes on and on forever, man. But somehow or another, in my whole life, Dean's was a big thing in my heart. It was always my dream to be with Dean and play Dean's. Because, uh, you know, they had them at the music store, and I'd go play them every chance I could. And I dreamed of having them. I ended up with two. I won one. My dad bought me one. Lost one. It came full circle. Now Dean's back. I'm back. We're hooked together. And it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in 20 years. So happy. The tone, the playability, everything about the guitar is amazing. And, you know, at 
being able to work with the actual mastermind of the whole thing that put the original together is beyond anything I would ever, ever, ever thought would ever happen to me, man. And it's a beautiful deal. I'm beyond happy. Oh, First time I met Dean was at Spirit Music in Dallas. And uh, I was like 15, 16. It was right around that same time, not 16 something, because I already had my own dime guitar, Dean, dime Dean, after I routed it up. Anyway, uh, so I knew Dean was stopping by the shop. I was like, all right. Dean, you like this story, huh? <laughs> Dean shows up. Dean shows up. And I'm like, all right, that's my boy. That's my man. And uh, I was trying the to get idol. to him, man, but there was the there, idol's idol. Uh, my, the idol's idol. Anyway, I couldn't, I couldn't get to him, man. He was just kind of low key, just kind of, kind of. I couldn't cut through, you know. And the store owner, I know, let him know that I was like the biggest Dean fan in the world, but Dean just didn't have time for dime. But, you know, that's probably the, the gay entity of being young, you know. And so what I did is I went and cranked up a couple stacks as loud as I could. And just started ripping everything I could rip as hard as I could, making as much noise as I could, trying to get his attention. And then somebody came and tapped me on the back, and I was like, it's got to be Dean. I turned around, and it's Dean. And he goes, pretty good, son. And I go, hey, right, thanks, man. Hey, uh, had my Sharpie ready. Would you sign my guitar? Absolutely. He flips it over to sign it, and there's no back plate on it. It's drilled, it's cut out for a Floyd Rose. He goes, ah, man, caught a huge hole in my guitar. What are you doing? I said, look, I had to have a Floyd Rose. Anyway, the story goes on and on and on from there, and here we are, full circle, you know, 15 years, 20 years later, 20 years, 20 plus. Man, we're getting old, man. <laughs> hey, man, with age comes wisdom is all I got to go say, man. First of all, man, I've always been a radical mother man. I mean, just in my mind, a crazy some Even before I drank, you know, it's all about racing hell, skateboards, BMX, going sideways. It's always had to be radical for me, man. When I started playing guitar, you know, and I saw the line of Dean's, I was blown away. And I knew immediately, I'd seen the Flying V and I'd seen the Explore. Then when I seen the ML, I was like, that is Dime bag, Diamonds shape right there. Shot the kid. Come on. Dean's going brown. Look at Dean running lights, dude. Never in 40 years did Dean think he'd be running lights and doing brown. Brown. All right, here we go. Everybody's going brown. That's a classic, dude. Classic Dean right there. Dean quit it. <laughs> Get your pull. Dad's gonna be ringing like hell tonight. So anyway, man, the thing that I first loved about the Dean guitar, beyond any other guitar, was just the sexicity of it, man. The wings shooting everywhere. The headstock, the greatest logo on a headstock ever. Wings, man. That means you can fly. You can do whatever you want with that guitar. And uh. Here I am, you know, doing yeah, exactly what I want, I flying all over the mother country with it. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. Effortless, effortless, and it's feeling good, screaming like a mother man. And we'll get some more tomorrow night, and hopefully we'll get a little better situation going on. We'll get your interview boy out of here, and we'll blow that up. Now, we'll see what kind of master antithesis theme you've got. One more question. It didn't work. Let's One more. Let's do the tattoo, the deep tattoo, man. <laughs> all right, all right, got that. So there it is. So, okay. All right. Man, I didn't think I'd ever even get a tattoo back in the day, you know. Played clubs for seven years, three nights. I mean, one more time. 
Didn't even think I'd ever get a tattoo coming up again. Didn't ever think I'd get a tattoo back in the day. You know, we used to play clubs seven nights a week, three one-hour sets a night. And, uh, man, we play everything from Van Halen to Iron Maiden to and who knows whatever, man. Anything, you know, and our own. And uh, when we finally got our own record deal, you know, we put out four records before we got a record deal. A long time coming. Kind of like the Dean thing. It's a long time coming. You work hard, you stay in the game, and you keep kicking, you keep driving forward for that target, you're going to hit the bullseye, man. I guarantee it. I'm living proof, man. So uh, when we finally did, I thought to myself that I should go ahead and scar myself up with a tattoo that I could look at when I was 50 years old, even if I failed tomorrow. I made it that far along and you know there's no way I could ever regret that tattoo you know I could be 50 look at it and go yeah late deeds kick got a record deal and I'm always from hell you see the blood dripping out of it too it signifies all the sweat blood and tears blood sweat and tears get that right Don <laughs>